The book of Acts is Church Growth 101. And if you want to help your church to grow, read the book of Acts. Phenomenal church growth in the book of Acts. Today, we're in Acts chapter 6, beginning in verse 1. Now, in these days, when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists murmured against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve disciples summoned the body of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brethren, pick out from among you seven good men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, notice who's first here, they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicolaus, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed, and laid their hands upon them, and the word of God increased and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the feet. It's, it's, it's Church Growth 101, priests obedient to the faith. Three points today out of the book of Acts chapter 6. Number one, set your priorities in alignment with God's will. Number one, set your priorities in alignment with God's will. This is how God's church grows. This is Church Growth 101. Now somebody will ask, well, what is God's will for the church? Well, Jesus Christ gave us the Great Commandment and the Great Commission. The Great Commandment is, listen, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, all of your strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself, right out of Mark chapter 12. And then the great commission from Jesus Christ comes at the end of Matthew's gospel, Matthew 28. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always. So this is God's will for God's holy church. This is how God's church grew from Jesus Christ to a handful of disciples to a small group in Jerusalem. And remember what Jesus Christ said, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Concentric circles expanding outward. This is church growth 101. This is how the church has grown to over a billion people worldwide and we're still growing. And it's imperative that we abide by God's will as we help churches to grow. Set your priorities in alignment with God's will. So if you look at the Great Commission from Jesus Christ, he says, make disciples. That's the one main verb in the Great Commission, make disciples. And then there's three participles there that modify the main verb, going, baptizing, teaching. This is Church Growth 101. Make disciples of all nations, going, baptizing, teaching. And so we set our priorities in alignment with God's will. For example, right now we're in February, and you might begin to think and pray about the Lenten season. Lent begins on Ash Wednesday, February 22nd. Easter this year is April the 9th. Begin to think and pray about the services and the people that you want to reach and people who are no longer in your church that you could invite back. And this is a perfect time of the year to begin to think and pray about special services, Mother's Day, Father's Day, and Vacation Bible School. This is a great time of the year to begin to pray 
and plan and prepare for vacation Bible school. Now somebody will say, well, David, we don't have any children. Well, you will if you have vacation Bible school. Begin to reach out and think about, pray about the people that are just down the road from your church that don't have a church. They're not going anywhere. And bring those kids into vacation Bible school. This is a perfect time of the year to begin to think and plan and pray about baptism. If you want to baptize in the Cheat River or baptize in a river somewhere, you think June, July, August are the times of the season that, that we can do that outdoors. And so you begin to think and pray about people that want to be baptized, that want to be saved and begin to share Christ with people. This is Church Growth 101. Set your priorities in alignment with God's will. Now, Rick Warren wrote a book. It's called The Purpose Driven Church. The Purpose Driven Church by Rick Warren. And he identifies the five purposes of a New Testament church. He identifies worship, which is number one, ministry, discipleship, evangelism, and fellowship. These are the five purposes of a New Testament church. So you begin to pray and set your priorities in alignment with God's will. Church Growth 101, and it's phenomenal how God grows his church. Uh, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth, said a church planter named the Apostle Paul. So set your priorities in alignment with God's will today. We're in the book of Acts chapter 6. We're glad you're watching the broadcast today. Set your priorities in alignment with God's will. Number two is a quote from Acts 6, 4. We will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. If you read Acts 6, and it's a short chapter, I commend it to your reading. There was a problem in the early church. The problem was that the Hebrews and the Greeks were arguing about distribution to the widows. And the, Greek were, were, the Greeks were saying, our widows are being left out of the daily distribution. And the apostles said, you know, it's, it's not right for us to give up the, the ministry of God's word to serve tables. Now, there's nothing wrong with serving tables. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that it takes a whole group of people to make a church work and to make a church grow. And the disciples very intelligently realized that they cannot invest all of their time serving tables when God called them to prayer and to preach God's word. And so this is a quote from Acts 6, 4. We will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So they prayed and they selected seven great men of God to be the, the, fo the focal point of the distribution to the widows. These seven were to serve the tables. And by the way, the word serve in Acts chapter 6, verse 2 is from our word deacon, diakonos, and the word for serve in Acts chapter 6, verse 4 is the same exact Greek word from the word which we got to give uh, our word deacon. And so either way, they're, both groups are servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're just serving in different capacities, and it's okay. It's okay that some people serve in a way that you don't. But here's the key. What has God called you to do? How has God called you to serve him in the church? And so that's where you fit in. That's where you work hard, you pray hard, you grow. And over the course of time, uh, you get other assignments as, as time goes along. We will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Now, prayer is phenomenal in the book of Acts. For example, in Acts 1.14, quote, all these with one accord devoted themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Notice the power of prayer. Notice the power of unity. Notice they're all working together. The men, the women, Acts 1.14. And then Acts 1.24, they prayed and said, Lord, who knowest the hearts of all men, show us which one of these two men thou hast chosen. And the lot fell to Matthias. So they chose Matthias as the twelfth man, the, the twelfth disciple. But here's the key. They prayed. They believed in the power of prayer. We need to get back to prayer. 
said it before, I'll say it again. If your child cannot pray in school, your child is in the wrong school. We need to allow our kids to pray and to grow and to develop spiritually. And we live in a, a rough world where kids are sometimes neglected or abused. We need to make sure they are in Christ, that they are protected and they are growing strong in Christ. This is critically important for our kids. In the early church, they were devoted to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Now, if God has called you to preach the word, preach the word. Don't get lost in some long, elongated, long-winded, you know, wild goose chase out in left field about some story somewhere, somehow. Preach the word of God. Get back to the word. Study the word. Uh, study to show yourself approved. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.15 Get into the Word and really dig as deep as you possibly can and feed your people the pure Word of God. Man, that's Church Growth 101. Three points today. We're in the book of Acts, chapter 6. We're glad you're watching the video. We thank you for watching today. Number one, set your priorities in alignment with God's will. The Great Commission. The Great Commandment. Make disciples going, baptizing, teaching. This is the perfect time of the year to begin to pray and plan and prepare for the Lenten season and Easter and Mother's Day and Father's Day and Vacation Bible School and Holy Baptism and the many ministries that God is calling you to do in 2023. Number two, we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the Word, quote, right out of Acts 6, 4. And number three, God wants you to be full. Number three, God wants you to be full, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, Acts 6, 3, full of faith in the Holy Spirit, Acts 6, 5, full of grace and power, Acts 6, 8. Now, if you're filled with God's Spirit, it means that God's Holy Spirit is living inside of you and that God's Holy Spirit is the dominant force in your life. You're experiencing God's presence all the time, God's power, God's purpose, that you're living your life according to His will and not your own to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Somebody say, well, David, how do I do that? Pray. Ask God to fill you with His Holy Spirit. You know, your body, according to 1 Corinthians, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So God wants every believer to have His Spirit, to have His power and His strength. And if ever there was a time in American history where we need God's power living within us, it is now. Not only for you, but for your children, your grandchildren, and generations to come. And so God wants you to be full. I want you to think for just a moment about a time when you were really hungry. You were famished. Maybe you had to work all day. There was no time out for lunch. Maybe you went uh, 12 hours without food. Maybe it was a 24-hour situation where you could not have any food. Maybe you were fasting. I want you to think about a time when you were really, really hungry. And think about the meal that you had. You sat down to a meal and you really enjoyed every morsel, every bite. And after that meal, you felt so much better. Well, the same is true for the spirit, for the soul, the mind, the heart. We need to be full of God's holy presence. And so God says, I want you to be full. There are three times in Acts chapter 6 where he mentions this word full. In Acts chapter 6 verse 3, full of the spirit and of wisdom. That's what it takes to be a true man of God, a true woman of God, or a true child of God. Number two, full of faith in the Holy Spirit. That was Stephen. And as we get into Acts chapter 7, that's going to become even more apparent to you. And then the third situation of being full is full of grace and power. Acts chapter 6, 8. Well, how do we get that power? Live your life every day by the Word of God for the people of God. And all of God's people said, Amen. Well, thank you for watching the broadcast today. And may God bless you and your family.